Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. IRS reports significant increase in texting scams, warns taxpayers to remain vigilant. Honestly, we've moved way past the point of tax preparers needing to be vigilant. Tax preparers forced to go from vigilant to vigilantes. I mean, you gotta be like Batman to do taxes these days. You're off the case, McGonagall. You're off your case, Chief. What does that mean, exactly? It means he gets results, you stupid Chief! Dad, sit down. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I'm in the field. In any case... I was once told, a rolling stone gathers no moss. Have you ever heard the old saying, a rolling stone gathers no moss? It's like, yeah, but it still gets dirty. Does that mean something to you? Uh... And it tends to grind off all its nice edges too, making it into a smaller stone than it otherwise could be. It's the same as don't wash your dirty underwear in public. The rolling stone, if not careful, may even roll into a boulder and break. Faster! Roll in here, yeah, there's no here. Or worse, it could roll right into a person, injuring them for life. For me, it's game, set, and match. I think you mean check and mate. And how would the rolling stone feel then? Got crushed by a giant horse, Luke. You wanna cut me a break? Honestly. The Rolling Stone would probably be sued at that point. I was waiting on a line, and I saw it in Quirer magazine while I was waiting on a line, and I saw Johnny Carson on the front page. It was a picture of him like this. The lawsuit only leaving a rolling pebble. Then I said, what's up with Johnny? I turned to the inside story, and his wife was on the other page, and she was like this. Plus. A nice green moss coat can be quite fashionable for a stone. And overhead it said, Johnny's wife wants half Johnny's money. And I turned to Johnny. <laughs> then I start thinking about it. Half. The moss coat accentuated the stone's beautiful emerald extremities. It brings out your eyes. You know what you need? You need eyebrows. Pigs don't have eyebrows. Well, this pig is going to. And it can really lessen the bite of the cold night wind, which is far more important in the end. I'm a rolling stone all alone and long. IR 2022-167, September 28, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today warned taxpayers of a recent increase in IRS-themed texting scams aimed at stealing personal and financial information. So far in 2022, the IRS has identified and reported thousands of fraudulent domains tied to multiple MMS, SMS text scams known as smishing targeting taxpayers. So obviously we've probably heard of phishing, typically thought of as the email attempts here. Usually if they're impersonating the IRS, they're using the IRS as an authority and as intimidation. There's usually gonna be a time factor involved and there's usually gonna be some kind of threat, that being either action from say a government agency or you're gonna lose the benefit that you might be getting related to a particular benefit. So you have to act now would be the general idea. So then usually if you click on a link, it'll take you to a fraudulent place where they'll try to collect your information that they might use for nefarious purposes, such as filing fraudulent tax returns or something like that. Or it might download something onto your computer. You would think similar fashion with the text messages, except now it's on the phone with the text messages, same kind of threat, same kind of impersonating the IRS, same kind of time constraint, same kind of end goal, trying to get your information that they can use for nefarious purposes. So in recent months, and especially in the last few weeks, IRS themed smishing has increased exponentially. So that's a very large increase if that is indeed the case. And notice in the last couple of years, of course, we've had the problems with COVID and the responses to the COVID problem have many of them gone through the IRS with relief such as the COVID payments that went out, the stimulus payments, and also changes to the law, especially those impacting the lower income side of things, things like the refundable tax credits. Now, remember like there was one time where if you were a low income individual, taxes were pretty straightforward because if you didn't earn much income, 
then you're not going to pay any taxes and it's pretty straightforward. However, because there's been a lot of increases to things like the like the uh, the credits and the refundable credits, meaning you can get money back with a credit even if you didn't have any income in some cases or if you had minimal income in some cases, that means that it, one is more complicated for low income people to file tax returns because those credits can actually be quite complex. And two, the change in the tax law means that a lot of people are being confused because now you have a confusing tax law that is different than it was in the past. And that also means the IRS is trying to advertise those new changes to the tax law as to try to show what they're doing in response as a government response. And of course, now you've got these scammers that are going to come into play because that makes the, the information a lot more valuable. So that means low income individuals are going to be more targeted because if you can get access to their personal information, you might be able to file fraudulent tax returns, which might give you access to some of these bigger benefits that are being put on the lower income side of things. So obviously this isn't really an unpredictable result of some of the, some of the things that have happened. And so here we have it. So smishing companies target mobile phone users and the scam messages often look like they're coming from the IRS offering lures like COVID relief, tax credits, or help setting up an IRS online account. Recipients of these IRS related scams report them to phishing at irs.gov. Now remember, reporting the scams could be a good thing to do, but you're really helping other people in the future as the IRS tries to compile all this information so they can take action. It's probably not gonna be helping you personally with your personal case. So if your information has been stolen and you know someone's gonna, it's out, it's out there online now, so now there's nothing anyone can do about that. You have to take your own action at that point in time, possibly from an IRS perspective, you try to get another pen so that it would be more difficult for someone to file a fraudulent tax return and then give the IRS the information that they are requesting so that they hopefully can take action to prevent further people from this happening to in the future. So quote, this is uh, phishing on an industrial scale. So thousands of people can be at risk of receiving these scam messages in quote said IRS commissioner Chuck Reddick quote, in recent months, the IRS has reported multiple large scale smishing companies that have delivered thousands and even hundreds of thousands of IRS themed messages in hours or a few days, far exceeding previous levels of activity in quote. With the approach of October's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, the IRS and the Security Summit partners, there's a link to them here, and the states and the nation's tax community reminded people and the tax professional community to be on the lookout for phishing scams and other schemes that could put sensitive tax data at risk. So part of this email seems to me kind of like covering themselves over there at the IRS saying here that we warned that this possible thing could happen. Well, that's great. A lot of people probably saw that this kind of thing uh, <laughs> could happen. So duly noted, you, you told us that that could happen. In any case, in uh, the latest activity, the scam texts often ask taxpayers to click a link where phishing websites will try to collect their information or potentially send malicious code into their phone. So that would be the key. They're trying to get you to link to another website where you give them your personal information, which they can then use for nefarious things like fraudulent tax returns or something like that, or they put a virus on your phone, which is a scary thing. So the IRS does not send emails to text messages asking for personal or financial information or account numbers. So the IRS typically still does old fashioned, just mail, snail mail, not even email. But obviously there's been a lot of changes to the law these days and everybody else is using the, the emails and text messages and so on. So it would be reasonable for normal people to think maybe the IRS is, is trying to update and that's what they're doing at this point in time, but they're not, <laughs> they're not. So these messages should all be red flags for taxpayers. Beginning in the fall of 2020, the IRS observed an increase in reports of smishing scams requesting taxpayers personal and financial information. These smishing campaigns continue through the pandemic. The IRS has taken numerous steps to warn people of these ongoing threats, including posting a video about how to avoid IRS text message scams. So here they go covering themselves again. They, we put a video, I mean, what do you, what, what do you want? We put a video out there. We've done everything we can do. So we got it. We got, it's not your fault. 
Taxpayers should continue reporting these scams to phishing at irs.gov. The, uh, so their reporting allows the IRS to report these scams to the appropriate service providers for action protecting other taxpayers who might receive a variant of the same scam. While the IRS works to shut down online fraud, criminals are using ever-evolving tactics to cast a wider net and catch more victims, like using algorithms to automatically generate hundreds or even thousands of fraudulent domains. For example, a recent campaign used just three dozen stolen or bogus email addresses to create over 1,000 fraudulent domains. Quote, particularly in these cases, the best offense is a good defense. End quote, said Reddick. Isn't that backwards, isn't it? Usually the other way around. Anyway, quote, taxpayer and tax pros need to remain con- consistently vigilant with suspicious IRS related emails and text messages. And if you get one, send in the IRS important details from the text can help us dis- uh, disrupt the schemes and protect others. So it's quotes like that that, that f- make it required for the tax professionals to go from vigilant to vigilantes because there's, there's no action being, there's, this is, this is ridiculous. Any case, reporting IRS related smishing. The IRS maintains an inbox at smishing.gov. So, so that's what they're doing. They got an inbox over there at irs.gov. So, it's phishing at irs.gov to process IRS treasury and or tax related online scams only. Smishing involving other agencies and or brands should not be reported to phishing at irs.gov. So if someone is impersonating someone other than the IRS, the IRS doesn't want it because the IRS is just trying to cover themselves for their own problems. They're not trying to get into anyone else's stuff. Reporting IRS themed text to the IRS allows security professionals to track and disrupt these scams. Individuals reporting scam texts to the IRS should include both the body of the message and the sender's information in one email or text. Copying the actual text into the email is preferred. However, if necessary, screenshots can be sent. Scam SMS slash text messages can only be copied and forwarded to wireless providers via text 27726 spam, which helps them spot and block similar messages in the future. The following process will help capture important details for reporting smishing to the IRS. Create an e- a, a new email to phishing at irs.gov. Copy the caller ID or email address. Paste the number or email address into the email. Press, uh, press and hold the SMS slash text message and select copy. Paste the message into the email. If possible, include the exact date, time, time zone, and telephone number that received the message. Send the email to phishing at irs.gov. Additional reporting that you can do beyond that. In addition to reporting the scam to phishing at irs.gov, if IRS related report the message to the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration using their IRS impersonation scam reporting form, there's a link to that here, and the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, through the complaint assistance to make the information available to investors. There's a link to them here. You're going to be reporting for like a month here. All incidents successful and attempted should also be reported to the Internet Crime Compliance Center. There's a link to that here. Any individual entering personal information or otherwise finding themselves a victim of tax related scams can find additional resources at Identity Theft Central on irs.gov. A lot of reporting going on here. I'm not I'm not thinking much action is happening or possibly will happen. That's why tax preparers vigilant to vigilante batman tax preparers that's what we need that's what we need so additional resources below irs.gov you got the reporting phishing and online scams there's a link to that here irs youtube here's how to avoid irs text message scams there's a link to that covid tax tip 2020-167 irs warns people about a covid related tax text message scam and then you got the federal commission's uh communications commission smartphone security checker you got the federal trade commission how to recognize and report spam text messages so there's links to all that stuff here as helpful as it may may be (laughs) or not and there'll be a link to this in the description